It is an urgent mission. In Catholic circles today, in rectories, in religious houses, in Catholic schools, in families today, is this supreme law of the priesthood ever mentioned seriously? Or is it just a relic of bygone times, all that talk about saving souls? In thinking of the priesthood in the church, in considering a vocation to the priesthood, there has to be the realization that the priesthood is not primarily about wearing the clerics or the vestments. It's not primarily about running parishes or even closing them. It's not primarily about being at committee meetings or even being the CEO of a huge parish conglomerate. Rather, it's about bringing people to God and, in so doing, helping them get to heaven for which they were made. You see, there is a heaven, but not everybody goes there. Our Lord said so, Our Lady said so, and there is a hell, and some do go there. Our Lord said so, Our Lady said so. So if there is a heaven to be gained, and if there is a hell to be avoided, I am happy to be a priest, to point people in the right direction, which is up. There are many reasons why the number of priestly vocations has dropped so dramatically in recent decades. We could make a very long, long list and conclude that this has been a kind of perfect storm in the church orchestrated by Satan himself. And I would like to emphasize one telling point in all of this discussion. Too many people today in, excuse me, my one telling point. In many people's minds and hearts today, what's the problem? The problem is the faith is blurred and it is weak. Which is to say, in matters of religion, many Catholics, too many, have become confused and lukewarm. And what is the antidote to these spiritual sicknesses? Clarity in knowing the teachings of the Church and fervent zeal in living them out. Clarity and zeal. Antidotes to confusion and lukewarmness. And of course, the final answer to most everything is prayer, which should inflame and permeate all that we are and all that we do. In the matter of vocations, prayer is all important. After all, our Divine Lord taught us to pray for workers to go into His harvest. Prayer will help to awaken in young men the heart-to-heart -heart knowledge of God, the desire to love others with true Christian charity, and the prayer will inspire in them the push, the compulsion, the drive to serve Him in the Church, in the priesthood. And so, as we now worship together before this altar, as we now adore our Lord's Eucharistic presence, as we now call upon our dear and blessed Mother for her glorious intercession, we must pray especially for our Diocese of Rochester, 
for the priests we have now, for the seminarians and discerners we have now, and for the vocations that we are going to have in future days. Pray in hope and with hope, because the good news is, the tide is turning. The church is recovering, finally, from the long famine in the land. There is an upsurge of priestly vocations happening in many places. And we are asking Almighty God to let it happen here. We need more priests, my dear friends, to do what only an ordained priest can do. First, to offer the holy sacrifice of the Mass and thereby consecrate the body and blood of Christ. Second, to forgive sins in the beautiful sacrament of peace, the sacrament of penance. And third, to anoint the sick and the dying. Deacons and lay persons can fulfill many other ministries in the church, but only the ordained priest in persona Christi can consecrate, forgive, and anoint. Do you see how important he is? How essential his role is in the mission of the church, whose supreme law will always be the salvation of souls. Don't forget this. Someday, when you are like that man in the auto accident, and you are in the last moments of your life, you are going to need a priest to come and open to you the gates of heaven. I hope you will be able to find one. I hope there will be someone at the rectory to answer the phone. Before we go on to the exposition, rosary, and benediction, let me just point out one last thing. At the end of our devotions this evening, we are going to chant the Te Deum Laudamus, the Church's ancient hymn of thanksgiving. We are going to sing it as a prayer of thanksgiving for two reasons. First, for the way in which our Lord is going to answer our fervent prayers this evening for vocations. And secondly, for all of the graces that have been given to souls thus far here at St. Thomas the Apostle Parish since its foundation in 1922 and since the opening of this edifice in 1965. St. Thomas's has had a wonderful history with wonderful priests and sisters and parishioners. Perhaps God, in His love and mercy, will see to its long continuance. <laughs> <laughs> 